You know, at first I didn't believe it, but this hot stage thing might just work. So in case you haven't been following the development of Starship, SpaceX recently announced that it was going to attempt to hot stage the next Starship launch. For those who don't know, hot staging is actually pretty much what it sounds like. You fire the second stage while it's still attached to the first stage. Now, frankly, this sounds insane, especially for a rocket that's supposed to be reusable, but hot staging does have a few benefits. And SpaceX certainly won't be the first organization to use it. Even before they announced that they were going to try to hot stage, SpaceX was already trying to simplify the staging using this weird flip maneuver. Essentially, while the rocket was traveling up, they were going to flip it very quickly and then detach the second stage, and hopefully that uh, rotational acceleration would pull the stages apart. This is a little bit fiddly, which is probably part of why they ended up doing hot staging instead, but the reason they were doing that was to reduce complexity. Typically, to separate rocket stages, there's a few complex things that need to happen. The first is that they are mechanically detached from each other. This is usually done with explosive bolts, which are literally holding the stages together, and then explode, breaking them, allowing the stages to come apart. But then you need some force to actually push the stages apart. You can use small rocket motors, a pneumatic piston like Falcon 9, or some rockets, if they're small enough, can get away with just using springs and plungers. But by doing a flip or a hot stage, you don't have to carry that extra system around. You don't need extra engines to push them apart. You don't need pistons or springs. And SpaceX has also been working on a mechanical latch rather than exploding bolts, which means you don't have to replace the parts every time you launch the rocket. Again, this is looking at reusability. But one of the issues with the flip, beyond it being a little bit fiddly to get them to come apart, is that you had to shut the engines down for quite a long time. And that comes with a couple side effects. One is that whenever you're not burning your engine, you are slowing down, falling back to Earth, so it's inefficient. And the second is something called eulage. You see, those systems that push stages apart create acceleration, and this is actually very useful for liquid rockets because liquid rockets need their fuel to be settled at the bottom of the tank in order to function. If it's floating around in zero G, you can get bubbles in there, and those bubbles will cause issues with the turbo pumps and inconsistent burning within the engine if they even make it that far without causing problems. So by having those small rocket engines, often called eulage thrusters, you help push all of the fuel into the bottom of a tank, and that allows for the second stage to ignite its engine safely. Now the flip didn't really solve this problem, uh, I'm not sure what their plan was. They might have used their RCS system as usage thrusters after they separated, or somehow the rotation of the vehicle or the way they had their valves set up would prevent bubbles from getting into the system when they tried to light the engines. But even all of that complexity is erased when you do hot staging. Because when you hot stage, the first stage is still running. They've said they're going to shut down all but three engines on the first stage during the staging process, but that's still enough thrust to keep all of the fuel settled in the upper stage tank. And this completely eliminates the need for any eulage during the main launch. And as Elon Musk pointed out when he said, never stop thrusting, it's more efficient if you never shut your engines down, because again, anytime your engines aren't running, you are slowing down and falling back to Earth at least until you're in orbit or close to orbit. Now, obviously, it's not that simple. This is supposed to be a reusable first stage, and you're shooting it with a rocket, so they had to add a lot of extra mass to the top with a secondary ring, which you can see here, which is basically just a heat shield, and that has vents on the side. Now this is a very interesting engineering challenge because you basically need a storm drain that functions at hypersonic speeds. Will this work? I don't know, it's very hard to model and very hard to simulate. I'm sure SpaceX has tried their best, but with problems of this magnitude, there's probably some reasonable error bars. But even if it doesn't survive the staging, the second stage will probably be fine if this rocket makes it that far, and they'll just iterate on it later. That's kind of how the entire Starship program works. SpaceX certainly isn't the first organization to attempt this. Actually, Russia has been doing it for ages on their Soyuz rockets, and they were going to try it on the N1 as well, but that never made it far enough into a launch. But all of this left me wondering, how much of a benefit do you actually get from hot staging? What is the actual efficiency improvement? Well, they're claiming about a 10% increase in payload, but I wanted to find out for myself, so I rolled out some of my old code. I've been working on this for many, many videos. It's a gravity turn simulator 
which is progressively getting better. In the last iteration, I added a reusable first stage. It was an attempt to recreate the Falcon 9, but I cut out a lot of the complexity of the landing. I didn't do re-entry burn. I didn't really model heating in any way whatsoever. And I didn't do a return to launch site. I did a very far downrange barge landing. This was the simplest to model not the most realistic. But one of the improvements that I thought I had made was to make this code rocket independent. You could just plug in new variables for a new rocket, run it again, and it would optimize the gravity turn for that rocket. I was wrong. Not that the code didn't work for the Falcon 9, it worked fine, I just forgot that I actually hard-coded a few things in a couple places, so when I tried to put the Starship in, I was getting a whole lot of nonsense. But after fixing more bugs than I can remember or even want to remember, I got it to simulate a Starship flight and optimize it. Now, even though there's no plans for the Super Heavy to ever land on a barge, I still didn't include the boost back burn because this is unnecessary complexity and all I really care about is the change in the payload you can get to orbit. So I just landed with more engines and added a whole bunch of extra fuel and called it good enough. Also for the second stage, because you know eventually it's gonna have to return to Earth as well, I also added some extra margin of fuel, which goes unburned. So to simulate hot staging, I just reduced the separation time to zero seconds, meaning that as soon as the first stage ran out of fuel, the second stage lit. And of course I created an animation which is way better than the one in the Falcon 9 video. This one has accurate time, telemetry, and I even ripped off SpaceX's on-screen graphics from their first test flight. And it had fuel remaining. So what I did is I slowly increased the payload until it was getting to orbit with exactly zero reserve fuel, of course excluding that margin I included for its uh, return to Earth. And then I increased the separation time by five seconds, slightly decreased the payload until again I was reaching orbit with zero fuel remaining, and then I repeated that test every five seconds up to a 30 second separation. This is probably way too long, but I wanted to make sure that the realistic flip separation time was somewhere in the middle. Obviously we never got to see a flip separation in real life because the Starship tumbled and cartwheeled and exploded, but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere between zero and 30 seconds. So let's take a look at what I found. I'm not going to bother to include the actual payload, there's a lot of inaccuracies in my simulation. Uh, for example, I'm always at 100% throttle, which is unrealistic and dangerous for an actual rocket. My drag model is a rough estimate at best, and obviously I don't have super accurate numbers for the dry mass of the Super Heavy or the Starship, or an accurate margin for fuel for either of their landing burns. But all of this should at least get us in the ballpark. So if I blow this plot up over here, you can see that we start at 100%, obviously for hot staging, because that's gonna give you your most payload to orbit. And then it decreases at just under 1% for every second of separation time. At 30 seconds, it's just under a 30% drop in payload. And it looks like there's probably some exponential curve here. Um, at this resolution, we can't really tell, but that makes sense to me. Obviously, if you stage and take an entire minute to light your second stage, you might not make it to orbit with any payload whatsoever. But based on SpaceX's claim of about 10% improvement, I would guess that the flip maneuver probably took you know, about 10 seconds. Now 10% might not sound like a huge improvement, but in the world of aerospace, that's pretty big. This is essentially free mass. Now obviously you do lose some of that mass by adding this extra weight to the first stage, but weight on the first stage is actually less important than weight on the second stage. Because the first stage is only with you for part of the flight, the second stage actually does most of the acceleration. This is also super important for Starship specifically because it's trying to be a reusable rocket. And reusable rockets are inherently heavier, so you need all the payload you can get out of them to make them worth it. Starship has to carry around a heat shield and these flaps which allow it to control its re-entry. It also has to carry around extra fuel for its landing burn. So 10% extra mass for more or less free is a huge deal. So yeah, when I first heard hot stage, I was very skeptical, but after thinking about it and doing some of my own engineering analysis, it actually makes a lot of sense. You can get a noticeable increase in payload just by shaving a few seconds off of your separation time, it seems like a less finicky way of eliminating complexity versus the flip maneuver, which allows them to cut out a lot of extra systems and extra mass. It moves all of that extra mass onto the first stage instead of on the second stage, where it's going to have less impact on your total payload to orbit. And after seeing the design of their shielding, 
I think the booster has a good chance of surviving. The ring I'm less sure about, but that can obviously be iterated on. I mean, this thing is actually pretty easily removable. So now you know why SpaceX is trying this crazy idea, and hopefully you're as excited as me to watch this second launch attempt. Much like the first, excitement is certainly guaranteed. I'm Gon Happy, and I'll see you in the next video.